Ambassador, thank you so much for talking to ANI. To begin with, we've recently seen Pakistan Foreign Minister Qureshi making references to the Jammu and Kashmir issue being taken up by the by Pakistan in the United Nations. Uh, he also mentioned about the fact that the UN Security Council discussed the matter three times within this year when it was first introduced by China last year. Do you think uh, that Pakistan has been able to make this into an issue and rake it up time and again in the United Nations? Thank you, Reena. You know, attempts by Pakistan to try and internationalize what is essentially a bilateral issue are nothing new. Contrary to what the Foreign Minister of Pakistan has asserted, there has been no formal meeting of the Security Council on the India-Pakistan issue since November 1965. What came up recently was in a closed door and completely informal meeting under what is called any other business, which is not even a recorded discussion. There was no outcome in this meeting, but what is interesting is that in the Security Council, practically every country except for China underlined the fact that this was a bilateral issue to be dealt with bilaterally between India and Pakistan. Therefore, Pakistan's attempt fell flat. Even the United Nations Secretary General in his statement last August clearly referred to the 1972 bilateral Shimla agreement. Consequently, Pakistan's efforts have not met with any traction in the United Nations Security Council. Even if Pakistan persists, there are no takers here in the United Nations. Now, my next question is, the Pakistani advisor has claimed that uh, India has sponsored terrorism. However, uh, from the UN side, uh, there have been recent reports implicating Pakistan on uh, terrorism-related uh, re issues. Uh, what is the current state of play on this matter vis-a-vis -vis Pakistan? I think you're right. It's a well-known fact that Pakistan is the nerve center of terrorism. Pakistan is home to the largest number of listed terrorists. Internationally designated terrorist entities and individuals, including Jamaat al Dawa, Lashkar e Taiba, Jaish e Muhammad, Hizbul Mujahideen, they're continuing their operations from Pakistan. Let me state that the UN and its reports have time and again reiterated the involvement of Pakistan in terrorist attacks abroad. You know, even in the recent report of the Analytical Support and Sanctions Monitoring Team under the 1267 Committee, which submits its report periodically on terrorist activities of ISIL, Al-Qaeda and its affiliates, it has several direct references to Pakistan's involvement. This report clearly mentions that Pakistanis are in leadership positions of terrorist groups. For example, the report mentions by name the leader of the Al-Qaeda in the Indian subcontinent, who is a Pakistani national. The names of the head of ISIL Khorasan and the former head of ISIL Khorasan, both of whom are Pakistani nationals, are also clearly mentioned in this report. There is a clear acknowledgement that the leadership and funding for these entities emanate from Pakistan. Further, the report mentions explicitly about the presence of 6,000 to 6,500 Pakistani terrorists in Afghanistan. In another report released in May, it mentions that Pakistan-based terrorist organizations, jaish e Mohammed and lashkar e Taiba, continue to have a large presence of terrorist fighters in Afghanistan and are involved in carrying out terrorist attacks there. The Prime Minister of Pakistan himself is on record saying that there are up to 40,000 terrorists present in Pakistan and they have attacked neighboring countries. Even in the recent resolution of the UN Security Council on the cessation of hostilities in the context of COVID-19, the Security Council has clearly recognized that they need to make an exemption for countries fighting against globally designated terrorist entities and individuals, thereby in effect vindicating our position. We've been seeing recent reports of uh, 
this information being spread through uh, the social media platform by Pakistan. Uh, we've also seen reports of member states condemning acts such as these and also pegging it as uh, infodemic. Uh, what is your take uh, in the UN context? Yes, you are right. India and a group of select countries cutting across regions made a joint statement on infodemic in the context of COVID-19 at the UN. This statement was designed to counter exactly this type of disinformation being spread by countries like Pakistan in the context of COVID-19 to foment division and create disharmony among communities. Pakistan continues to do damage through such disinformation campaigns. Our joint statement received widespread support, widespread political support from over 130 member states and observers. Our external affairs minister had emphasized that we need to take concrete steps to counter this infodemic. The fact that the Pakistan mission to the UN is compelled to invite a person who has been convicted in the United States, Gulam Nabi Fai, to spread their propaganda is indicative of the fact that they do not have any reasonable voice that can help propagate their narrative. Consequently, I want to reassure you that the attempt by Pakistan to involve the United Nations in the context of Jammu and Kashmir and in the context of their inimical activities against India has not borne fruit and has been strongly refuted by India at every turn. We will continue to counter their moves in the future as well. Thank you so much for talking to me and I appreciate it.